So we're going to use a for loop to actually iterate through this uh, list. So I'm going to use a for in for this. There are a number of different ones. There's for in, for range. Um, but for this one, we're going to use a for in. So for a for in, we use the command for, and then we define a variable. And I'm going to put, because this will actually be the actual, the item that's actually in this list. So these are coordinates, so let's go for that. Let's go for called. So for called in LST. So, so what will happen, this for loop will actually go through this list one at a time, assign each tuple to a called, and then anything under, underneath it will execute. Now I need a colon here, and this is important. Hit enter. Now this requires some white space, so if I tab over two uh, spaces, or we use tabs, but you have to be consistent here, so the white space has to be consistent, so I'm gonna use tabs for this. You can't mix spaces and tabs, otherwise it will start complaining about indentation mi mixings in there. So make sure you keep consistent. So I've tabbed over, so anything in this tab now will be part of that for. So I've gone for called in list. So at the moment, if we've gone through it once, we've picked up the first item in here. So I'm going to actually run this command and I'm gonna change the X to be called. Now, remember that we've taken the first item in this list. So our first item will be a tuple. So the same applies. So called and I want the first part of that tuple, zero, zero based index, and I'm gonna do the same for Y. But this time, take index one, the second part, and that should be it. Now, notice that we've got the app, um, app active document recompute. Now I'm gonna do this last, so I'm gonna unram that, take the hash off, now I'm going to leave it at this level, at this this point outside this loop, because I don't want to recompute every single item that's placed on screen. I want to actually allow us to recompute at the end, save CPU cycles, but it also can do it so I can actually demonstrate how the loop works. So we first assign up a list of tuples, and then we step through each of these tuples in our list and sign them to called. Now with the tuple that is picked up, it will actually create a circle geometry on the screen using the tuple which has been assigned to called and taking the, using an index, taking the first part of the tuple and then the second part, because it's zero base index, we're starting from zero. So with this one, if we try and run this, for called in list, so look in list, pick up the first one, first time in. So we've got three, four, app dot sketch add geometry, add in the circle, the called, the first part of that called, which is three, and then the second part of that called, which is four. And then that will go around and around for each of those. Once it's run out, it will drop down to this this one here because this is outside the loop and it will activate those documents. So let's give it a run. We've got no errors, so we should have a number of circles there. Let's zoom in. And we can actually, if I can zoom in properly, let's use the old keyboard. We can actually click on these and you'll notice that one's zero nine, that one's three four six two, zero nine three four six two, zero nine three four six two. So that's actually stepped through that list, that data list, and actually placed all those on screen. Now how can we use this in the real, real the real world? Well, 
one way is actually if we was given a um, list of a drilling pattern and someone said I want 100 holes drilled and I want you to place them in free CAD and you, I want them to actually be you create a model and actually draw this on the CNC machine then you'll be thinking oh, I've, got, I've got to sit there and actually create 100 holes but if they've got the XY coordinates there especially if, in the, if it's in the file you could actually use this to load in that file fill this list from the file with one one command and then run this macro and it will actually place the circles on screen you can find the size of the circles and we can do that and then we'll just from there say those are the circles you want drilled let's just move that one out away second no oh, left one in there let's just get rid of that I forgot to clear my screen let me just run that again so I should get three in there there we go we've got three in there just move that one over so it's out of the way otherwise I won't be able to do any padding so I'm going to close that so I've got those circle there I'm going to go back up to model and I'm going to create a new sketch in there XY plane okay and I'm going to create a just a piece of stock now I can add, add this to close that um, that's pad that sketch smart virtual value there and now we've got the sketch there and I want to map that sketch to a face so if I click on sketch map mode face and we'll stick it on the face there so it's mapped it to the face okay that and then I can actually click on that sketch which are the holes and pocket those holes and there we go so those are pocketed all the way through and okay that so now any changes to that script go back to the pocket script which is that one let's get rid of all of them now there so any changes um, let's make sure they're even they're spaced one four two two and three nine is that a few mm. Nine, nine. Just making sure they're not overlapping. Add another one in there. Uh, one, five. Also, they've got to make sure they go inside the pad. This may not work. Let's hit play. <laughs> make sure they're not all overlapping. They all are overlapping. Let's see what that does actually. Let's close that. There we go. So that's actually <laughs> that's actually worked. I wasn't expecting that to work, um, but as you can see, we can actually change these. So desire ten, twenty, um, so set four and ten, one, yeah, and ten. Maybe ten, twenty, thirty, forty. There we go. Let's get rid of all those. Let's go on sketch first. That'd be a good idea. I'll click sketch the pocket. Let's get rid of them. And then pop back in here and run the command. Oh, they've gone over there. <laughs> not doing very well but there you go so you, you get the idea um, my sketch was a bit bigger than all the, other, all the others but you can actually allow that to do drilling patterns or taking holes out and actually change them on the on fly depending on the days that you want so this video is a precursor to my next one which will take a image and we're going to actually use that image to actually create a 
drilling pattern or a pocketing pattern on a piece of stock actually in the silhouette of that image so for instance if I placed a A, drew a letter A on in black and white on an, on an image and loaded that through. What we'll do, what we'll see in the end is a drilling pattern for the letter A actually placed on the actual piece of stock with all the holes nice and evenly, and the holes will actually make up the pattern of the A, and that can be used for any image. So. For instance, the silhouette of a head, we can actually have a head on there, etc. And that will be the actual more advanced tutorial to this one. And that gives you a bit of an application of actually how to use this. And through that, we'll be going through loading an image, reading pixel data, traversing that pixel data to actually create the holes on, on screen, and then placing that on a piece of stock. Obviously, don't have to it doesn't have to be pockets it could be pads so it could actually actually bring um, depth to those and extrude those out from the piece of stock so that will be in the next video and it's relatively this not much code um, it shouldn't be much code I haven't done it yet um, but it's a good way of actually uh, demonstrating how we're going to actually use this to actually go forward okay I hope that helped so that's not arrays, that's lists, there's two types of collections, tuple and lists, and a for loop, a for in loop. Um, there are, are other for loops, but I will go through that on the next video. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site, and also I have a Ko-Fi site, um, where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is, and that's at ko-fi.com slash M-A-N-G zero. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.